This is the same idea we just did with those that thoracic cavity volume, but now we're going to bring in some physics to it in terms of pressure and volume. So I want you to think about as you decrease the volume of a container, let's draw a container here. If you decrease the volume, so let's make it this big, what's gonna to happen to pressure inside that container? It's going to increase. Right, so this is due to the number of gas molecules in here. Um, assume this is air. The same number of gas molecules are going to be present here, but in a smaller container. That increases pressure. This is Boyle's law, which says that pressure and volume are inversely related. So as pressure increases, pressure increases as volume decreases a decrease in volume is going to increase pressure. This is different than talking about the pressure of fluid volume. We're talking about the volume of a container. Um, the volume of fluid inside a container, right, that's when we talk about blood pressure, decrease fluid volume is going to decrease pressure, like blood pressure. That's different than talking about the container. The container in this week for us is the thoracic cavity. So the container in this scenario is more like um, blood vessels, right? Vasoconstriction is the container that increases pressure. So Let's look at how this applies to what we already talked about with the lungs, with inhalation, exhalation. So with this scenario here, remember we had the diaphragm contract, we had the external intercostals contract. This is going to result in increased volume in the thoracic cavity. And this is going to cause a change because of the pressure difference. So as the volume in here increases, the pressure lowers. Pressure decreases in the, in the lungs. That's what allows air to flow in. When those muscles relax, um, the volume here goes back to be less again pressure is going to increase. That's going to force, so actually we'll go through that, volume decreases because of those muscles relaxing. The pressure outside is now greater than the pressure inside and therefore air flows out. The initiator though is the, the muscles causing the change in volume. So we're gonna care about air pressure as well, right? Because we're looking, comparing the pressure inside the lungs to the air pressure in the atmosphere. So I wanna remind you what atmospheric pressure is. Atmospheric pressure is due to all of the gases um, and stuff that's inside the atmosphere. It's exerting a pressure on the earth. This is measured with a barometer measures pressure. Remember, pressure is force over area. At sea level, we call this one atmosphere. So P pressure of the atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. This is also called one atmosphere at sea level. This is due to the um, just how many how much gases are present at sea level. If we go up to a high mountain, um, Mount Everest, what's this going to do to the PATM See, at Everest? It's going to be lower. Up that high, it's significantly lower. That's going to affect um, our ability to obtain oxygen. So respiratory pressures are always going to be relative to atmospheric, um, which can make things a little trickier maybe. 
label some pressures here. First, a learning check. Label the plural layers. I'll do this as well. So here we've got this, it, this pink stuff is muscle, right? Then our outer light layer is the parietal pleura. We've got the visceral pleura on the inside. And in between that, we've got the pleural cavity that's full of serous fluid. Now, outside of the lungs, atmospheric pressure to assume sea level is 760 millimeters of mercury. That's um, going to be zero because we're doing everything compared to this. So we're going to look at the differences in pressures inside the lungs compared to outside. So in this place in here, this is called intrapulmonary pressure, the pressure inside the lungs. It is 760 millimeters of mercury, which we then call zero. It's zero different. This is called pressure pulmonary. And this is um, in this condition right here. We'll talk then about changing these pressures during inhalation and exhalation. So this would be um, no inhalation or exhalation would occur given this pulmonary pressure because you had to have a pressure difference, remember, to allow for flow. This pressure right here, this is intrapleural pressure. also called PIP, pressure intrapleural. It is always negative to intrapulmonary pressure, minus four. So in this case, it'd be 756 millimeters of mercury, which is negative four compared to um, both the atmosphere here and the inside the lungs. What is transpulmonary pressure? That's the pressure difference across here. That's plus four. So we might come back to that briefly. Um, the pressure difference. And the most important thing is this intrapleural pressure is always less than P, the pulmonary pressure, intrapulmonary pressure. And that is so that the lungs can stay inflated Without that negative pressure, it's, it's like a vacuum, the lungs would collapse. 